Hello and welcome to the ASX Investment Opportunities in Review webinar. Any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realise that not all investments are appropriate for every individual. Uh, as I go through today's uh, Opportunities in review. The technology that I'll be using is the Investor Signals uh, member site. You can subscribe to that for thirteen hundred and twenty dollars for the for the year. And if at the end of the recording you'd like to give our office a call and have any questions, we can help you get set up with the technology. Uh, just either email or contact me one three hundred six one four double zero two. Uh, moving straight into the uh, what I think what the way we'll approach today's session is we'll look at the stocks that are in the ASX 100 model portfolio and then we'll go through the specific opportunities in review that have been posted on the blog. So in the members area this is the dashboard that you're presented with. Uh, we're going to click on model portfolio. We're going to go across to the drop down. We're going to select ASX 100. What this is doing is giving us a list of all the stocks out of the 100 that currently qualify for being in the model portfolio. Um, there's a number of ways that we can then interact with this table. My preference often is to look at it in order of stocks that have most recently been added. So we can click on the days held column, get the least number of days to the top. And we can see there that moving down the list, Amcor was added 10 days ago, uh, down or EDI 13 days ago, uh, Magellan Group, etc. You could al also organise it alphabetically, you could organise it by percentage gain. But for today, uh, what we're going to do is move through the list of 100 of, of the stocks that are in the 100 model and we're going to look at them in the order that they were added. Just as a reference point, the way these returns are calculated, it's the uh, capital gain in the stock as well as the dividends. The accumulated dividends are added in this column here. So if we click on Amcor, and I'll just provide a little bit of commentary as uh, we roll through the stock. So Amcor has been added back into the model portfolio as a result of it switching from sell conditions back into buy conditions. So Amcor has a bullish structure of a higher high, higher low. Fundamentally what we've seen here in Amcor is fairly low levels of earnings growth in their earnings results six months ago. Uh, over the that period we've started to see the integration and finalization of the acquisition with Bemis Group in the US. Amcor's forecasting about $180 million of cost savings as a result of combining Bemis with Amcor over the next three years. It'll be interesting to have a look at the earnings result for Amcor that comes through in the June half, so in, in roughly coming out in sort of uh, mid-July. Um, to see what the underlying earnings trend in the business is going to be like, we're probably going to have at least uh, one or two fairly messy earnings results as that integration and the costs associated with that work through. But uh, we'll certainly start to dig into the earnings results uh, as they come through in July for the uh, first half 19. We're expecting Amcor to have underlying growth somewhere between 4% on the low side and maybe 8% as a maximum on the high side. So with a stock now on about a 4.2% dividend yield, it's just back at fair value. I don't see that there's a lot of upside in Amcor, but I think you know, this is a value opportunity to look at adding Amcor back into your portfolio or just adding it in for the first time. So for us, it's a buy down around this 1550 level, any pushback up towards 1650 is really an opportunity to sell covered calls and enhance the cash flow from the return. Uh, down on EDI, so this switch from sell conditions to buy conditions here at $7. Now down on there's no options over this, so if we're having to pick stocks, sort of cherry pick names out of the top 100 model portfolio rather than own them all. Uh, down as attractive, it's obviously exposure into uh, engineering and infrastructure spending, which is an attractive part uh, of the growth theme within the Australian economy. Uh, but at around $7, I think it's just fair value for us at the moment. 
Uh, Magellan Group, so this has done very well. So we had the recent switch from sell to buy conditions here at around $40, stock now pushing $47. Insurance Australia Group, switch from sell to buy here at around $7.40, pushing up towards $7.80. Uh, this is one that I've posted on the on the blog. We've been buying it in client portfolios. So at around these levels, you could look to sell covered call at eight dollars. Uh, IAG goes ex dividend uh, in. August at 20 cents uh, so you want to look at selling call options on the other side of that August dividend and boosting the cash flow so it's a combination of the dividend and the extra income from the call option you're generating around 10% cash flow on an annualized basis so at around eight dollars I think IAG's back to full value uh, a2 milk this stock trades on a very high PE but from a momentum perspective uh, high 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 low so the algorithms flag the buy entry here at around sort of this $13 a stocks put it pushing 1450 at the moment Suncorp was recently added again switching from sell to buy conditions was added in here at $12.80 pushing higher um, so again, what I'm going to do is just move through these stocks fairly quickly. These are all the stocks that are in the ASX 100. Then we'll come back and uh, just review the performance of the model portfolio and then finish this morning's recording with a look at the opportunities in review, which are the stocks that are on uh, the blog at the moment. So Sydney Airports, uh, we had a buy signal on this at around 7.30, now pushing 7.77. So Sydney goes ex-dividend in another week or two. Uh, owning it here and selling covered calls out into September and stripping out the upcoming dividend makes sense. Uh, AGL, we're seeing this correct from sort of 23 back down to $20. So buying it here. Uh, earnings growth in AGL, I think, is a little bit limited. So it's one where you, again, want to look at selling the call option and stripping out the dividend and, and the added call premium. Oz Minerals, so we had a buy signal here at around uh, $9 or $8.80, pushing back up to around $9.60, $9.70 at the moment. Uh, Oz Minerals, with the expansion of their uh, mines, uh, we're likely to see a, l a lot more copper production in at the margin gold, but predominantly copper production coming online over the next two to three years. So if base metal prices stay fairly buoyant, uh, there's significant earnings uptick for Oz Minerals two to three years out from now. Um, uh, National Australia Bank, so after really not holding many of the bank stocks in the model portfolios we've started to see a few of them we've seen Macquarie, ANZ, National so National was added back into the model here at around $24 the stock's now trading $26 plus uh, so we're starting to see some positive momentum build there in the banking stocks BHP switched from sell conditions to buy so for the most part of 2017 and 18 uh, BHP was in uh, buy conditions uh, we had a short period where it was removed from the model and then it was added back in again uh, BHP in line with our view that the market's close to full value we think BHP is pretty full value at around $40 uh, Tabcorp we've seen the correction here back down to $4.30 440 Tabcorp obviously merged with Tats Group 12 months ago so we're still seeing some of those integration benefits flow through at around $4.50 I think on a 5% dividend yield, Tabcorp looks reasonably attractive. Upside's probably not much beyond $4.80. So in some cases, we've gone out and sold the $4.90 call option into December. Uh, Pendle Group, not doing too much there at the moment, but this one's added uh, into the model portfolio. This is the old BT funds management business. Uh, Spark Infrastructure, this is... Uh, electricity retailing predominantly in South Australia and in Victoria but with interest rates uh, falling we've seen money flow into this uh, the Elgo model added it into the portfolio around 220 and we're now pushing 250 QBE insurance so we've seen this switch from sell conditions into buy conditions so it created a buy signal around 950 the stocks now $12 odd um, the insurance names we've seen buy signals in IAG Suncorp and QBE uh, and most recently we had a further sort of buy signal there at around 11 
25 and that was one that I posted on the blog so we'll review that. Uh, Woodside Petroleum, this is a stock that sits in the 100 model after switching from sell conditions into buy. Uh, so the original buy there was, was around that $30 level now pushing up to $35 and we've had a more recent buy signal there at around $34. Uh, Cube Holdings, so uh, transport uh, and infrastructure business here. So Cube Holding at around two thirty was added into the model, now pushing three dollars. Uh, Goodman Group, so this has been a, a terrific growth story within the real estate investment trust. Switch from sell conditions into buy signal there at ten dollars, now pushing almost fifteen dollars. We're seeing GPT tilt their portfolio to sort of these faster growth logistic. Uh, fulfillment centres that Goodman focuses on uh, so we think that provides upside for GPT but from a momentum standpoint Goodman Group's been one of the better performing stocks in the model portfolio. Macquarie switched from sell to buy uh, it's in the model portfolio from around this hundred dollar level uh, we've had further confirmation of buy signal at around this 115, 120 level and again that was a stock that I posted on the blog. Uh, TPG Telecom that was added into the model hasn't really done too much uh, since it's been added. Uh, GPT went from sell conditions into buy conditions here it was added into the model portfolio at around 480 and we've had further confirmation of that at around this 560 level stock now pushing up towards 615 620 gpt goes x dividend in another week so again if you're wanting to uh, build extra cash flow for your portfolio you could look at selling a call option into September at say that 625 level and stripping out the upcoming dividend and boosting the cash flow from the call option or if you're looking for straight capital growth and you're happy with the underlying dividend yield of these stocks simply building a portfolio around um, the model portfolio holdings uh, has delivered almost double the return of the index over the last five years. Uh, ResMeds are holding within the model portfolio so it was added at around this uh, 1430 level now pushing up towards $17. Uh, ANZ uh, switched from sell into buy conditions at around $25, now pushing up towards $28. A Dexas Group switched from sell into buy here at around $10, now pushing $13.75. Uh, Centre Group hasn't really done too much since being added to the model. It was added around $380, and we're sitting just below that level at the moment. Same with Vicinity, hasn't really been a strong performer. It's about line ball with where it was originally added. Uh, Flight Center has been a stock that's underperforming in the model portfolio. So we'll have a look at uh, the performance of the model and different ways to look at the returns of the stocks that have been added uh, once we get through these. Um, but Flight Center back at around $41. For me, it's more of a trading stock between sort of this you know, $38, $39 support, $44 resistance until we actually really start to see this building a new higher low formation there. Uh, Woolworths, I don't mind this but not too much in the way of capital growth so owning this and selling and at the money covered call and stripping out the dividend but if we look at it from a technical standpoint it switched from sell conditions to buy conditions and was added into the model at around $27 now pushing up towards 32 but for investors today looking at this I think buying it here and selling a call option out into December and stripping out the upcoming 50 cent dividend in September again you're able to turn that sort of three or four percent yield into almost 10 percent cash flow on an annualized basis. Uh, Seek was added into the model portfolio it's, uh, after selling off sort of further than the original entry we're now back up at about sort of where that original entry point is or slightly above but for me Seek starting to look a little bit expensive at the moment. Uh, Altium Group, so this was recently added to the ASX100 model portfolio and uh, this is a software technology company, uh, trades on a fairly high PE, uh, about 50 times forward earnings, but they are growing underlying earnings at about 20% per annum. Um, so at around $30 looks to be reasonable support there. If we look 
when was it added to the model portfolio so the original sort of signal back there at around twenty dollars was support and the stock's been making higher highs and higher lows uh, evolution so it was added into the model portfolio at around two dollars seventy uh, continuing with the higher highs and higher lows we have more recent signal there at around three dollars uh, REA group so this is in the model so it was a added back here at around seventy dollars stock now pushing ninety two uh, JB Hi-Fi was added into the model at around twenty one twenty two dollars now pushing twenty six uh, Reliance has been a bit disappointing, so this is a stock that's underperformed in the model. It was added at around $4.60. It's now trading $3.50. Uh, Crown Resort, so this is originally added back in the, added into the model at about $12. Uh, we've obviously seen uh, James Packer sell down 50% of his holding to Stanley Ho. I've been pointing out on the blog that we've just seen price action at the moment come back down and fill this price gap. This was the price gap that was created from Wynn's takeover offer that was later withdrawn. Uh, but I'd expect to see Crown start to find support down here at around this 1180 level. Uh, Charter Hall, so one of the better performing REITs. It went switch from sell conditions into buy here at around $5. We're now pushing up towards 1130. Uh, Washington uh, Sol Patterson, so this was uh, originally added from the sell conditions into the buy conditions at around $16, we're slightly above that, uh, back on support at around $20 there at the moment. ASX Group has been one of the better performing stocks in the model, so it switched from sell conditions into the first buy condition there at around $47 back in 2016, and we're now pushing $81. Um, ASX getting down a pretty low dividend yield, about 3.2%, 3.3%. They're growing underlying earnings at about 5%. Uh, but obviously as the markets compress dividend yields looking for cash flow we've seen a big PE expansion whereas ASX may have previously traded at around 14 15 times earnings today it trades up closer to 30 times earnings so we have seen very large PE expansion in the market as we've seen you know crowded money chase uh, a return on investment but you know that's not unique to shares we've obviously seen that across you know commercial property and other asset classes as global interest rates uh, have been at what everyone thought are record low levels but <laughs> appear to be going even lower um, so ASX, so we originally had the buy signal back here. We've had further confirmations of it. And the most recent round of buy signals was on the pullback there to around $57. Uh, so something like this, I guess if you just think about what the algorithm is doing long term, uh, the next sell-off that we see in the ASX and it may be at the back half of this year, maybe early 2020, the next sell-off where we see ASX back at maybe $65 to $70, we'll likely see another buy signal. So having uh, that turned on where you're getting the alert that the stock's been added back into the model portfolio just helps you to have a think about you know, rebalancing your portfolio when you see these quality names if you don't already own them you know being reminded to take advantage of them when they're on the lows uh, Northern Star's been one of the better performing stocks in the model switch from sell conditions to buy conditions originally back here at two dollars we've had a series of further entry uh, alerts along the way as the stocks continue to make higher highs and higher lows and the most recent signal back here at around eight dollars stock now pushing ten dollars um, CSL uh, again one of the better performing stocks in the model switch from sell conditions in 2014 into buy conditions in early 2015 and we've had a continuation of these higher high and higher low formations and a number of alerts along the way to add this stock into the model portfolio and then there we are back to Amcor uh, so before we look at the opportunities in review so I'll just recap the model portfolio a couple of things to think about here so you click on model portfolio there's a list of different ones to choose from <coughs> you can go in there and review those in your own time today we looked at the ASX 100 so just make sure that this envelope is turned on green so it may be gray by default you want to click on that and turn it green that'll ensure that you get an email on the day 
whenever a stock is either added or removed from the model portfolio. To view these stocks, you may want to do it as we just did then, which is days held, least number of days, and we toggled through them in reference to when the stock was most recently added. We may want to look at percentage gains, so show me the worst performing stocks in the model portfolio, and Flight Center, uh, TPG Telecom, uh, Pendle Group, uh, they're really the only three that are underperforming. There's a couple there that are line ball. But for the most part, if we go through the stocks that are doing well, North Star, CSL, uh, Charter Hall, ASX, so that was one that we spent a bit of time on. That's up 81% from when it was added. Uh, Goodman Group's up 47%. So you can look at it from that point of view. Uh, even just to jump into the ASX top 20 model and have a look what's happened here. So Amcor was added. It's the only stock that's negative, CSL. So as you go through here, this will give you a list of the uh, sector allocations based on the model portfolio. So you can see sort of at the moment we're probably most overweight insurance and banks within the top 20 model. If you want to go down here, you can see if we get the sell date the most current sell date to the top. You can see there that Wes Farmers generated 52% return, IAG generated 41. Again, those returns include the dividends as well. Uh, and then if you want to go down uh, and look at this bar graph here, this just shows you in a relative uh, sense to the other stocks in the portfolio so if we put our mouse over that we can see CSL is clearly the best performing uh, stock in the top 20 portfolio center groups the worst uh, you know Woolworths is doing well ANZ is doing well so that you've got your current holdings at the top sector allocation here performance of current portfolio there through a bar graph and then a review of the recent closed positions at the bottom. Uh, we've just added a new ETF model portfolio so if you click on so ASX ETFs is all ETFs listed on the ASX so that's a model portfolio where the algorithm engines picking which ones out of all the ETFs listed on the ASX whereas this particular one here ETF model portfolio is only looking at the database of iShares which is an ETF provided by BlackRock so if we were to look at that and we can see here uh, the stocks so I'd encourage you to go in have a look at this particular model portfolio this is a true global investment portfolio using the best quality ETFs or you know, the best provider I think BlackRock uh, and if you have a look at sort of the recent additions uh, I double O is the uh, well top 100 companies uh, the Taiwan uh, was recently added as an index you've got your Asia top 50 so you can go in there and toggle through those and, and have a look at those that have been added all right so now let's click on watch list we're going to go in here and what we're going to do is I'll just point out a couple of things each day when the signal emails run if you miss them come in here click on ASX signals it stores the last seven days of signals and then you're able to just simply get the buy signals to the top and toggle through these uh, having a look at the last seven days of signals so again if you've missed a couple come in here once a week toggle through these stocks and take a look at them uh, today what we're going to do is focus on this one here the blog post so this stores the last 30 days of stocks that have been posted on the blog and from this list we're going to drill down into our opportunities in review so click on that organize them in buy or sell order so I'm going to get the buys to the top and you can see there that the sells are at the bottom uh, so buys at the top I'm going to click on that stock and then we're going to go through these so AGL's one I think you can have a think about this is more of an income play for portfolio so owning it here and selling a covered call strategy uh, stripping out the upcoming 63 cent dividend in August you're going to be generating 10 percent cash flow um, and an example if we're buying into the stock at $20 doing something around a $21 call option into maybe October or November 
you're going to be getting about 60 cents for that so you're doubling the dividend plus allowing for a little bit of capital growth uh, and that's the way that we would see the opportunity there in AGL. Uh, Altium Limited, so this is a momentum play and therefore you want to be looking at a stop loss I think in this and for me the way I look at that is you could uh, either apply a moving average so something as simple as this 10 day moving average as long as it stays above the 30 day moving average you stay long the stock as soon as it breaks down you get out or alternatively give yourself some more room and say unless the share price comes back down and takes out that low I'm going to stick with this stock and the reason why I talk about stop losses here with this is obviously just because it's a high PE name trading 50 times earnings and if there's any sort of recalibration in the market of what type of premium they're willing to pay for high PE stocks then you probably just you don't want to be holding it while that recalibration so just looking for as long as the momentum continues stay with it it's more of a growth name for portfolios and then think about running your stop loss on a break below now Amcor uh, fair, val fair value for this is probably around this 15.50 level um, buying it on a dip so it's under buy conditions at the moment buying it here looking for a slight move higher and then selling the covered calls over it if you look out two three years even five Amcor is a very good company it's defensive relative I think to the rest of the market or at least in, in a softening uh, uh, market backdrop Amcor should hold up better than most um, so keep this one on your watch list I think there's a buying opportunity emerging there in Amcor and I've added that into the notes and we'll attach the notes to today's recording when we send it out uh, the Australian banks uh, ANZ, NAB and Macquarie all sit in our model portfolio so just draw your attention there to the higher highs and higher lows in ANZ owning it here uh, ANZ doesn't pay another dividend until uh, November so depending on how bullish your view is on the market you could sell a $29 call option over the next month or two to bring in some extra income on ANZ or alternatively just continue to hold the stock whilst it's making these higher highs and higher lows and collect the dividend yield. Um, I made a note of this one on the blog on Saturday. Now, generally, we don't spend too much time on the smaller cap stocks, but Catapult is an interesting technology play within the sports um, monitoring uh, area of the marketplace. So the stock price is corrected from 140 down to a low there of 106. We're starting to see positive momentum here. Again, you could use the moving averages as a reference point. Uh, maybe in this case, just simply say, uh, well, as long as, say, the 30-day moving average continues to trend higher uh, or that the stock price stays above that 30-day average, that could be a set of rules for this. So, again, this is a momentum play, but it's you know, certainly a little bit outside of our core focus being top 50 top 100 stocks but I just wanted to draw your attention to it so if we look at the history of this it's obviously been in a long downtrend and it just appears that we're starting to see a bit of positive momentum develop uh, in the company and it'll be one that I'll continue to read up a bit more on on the financials and update you on the blog uh, Crown Resorts so uh, keep this one on the watch list whether we get down and test I'd be surprised it's not my expectation to see it back down at one uh, at 11.20 but obviously what we've seen is Star Entertainment come out and with weak VIP gaming numbers uh, that's now had analysts flow through that same sort of downgrade in percentage terms to Crown's VIP gaming and you start to get a valuation that sees it back sort of where it was prior to sort of takeover premium being priced into the stock so what you're really seeing at the moment is a lot of institutional investors that were holding this stock uh, looking for a premium uh, through a takeover bid and now that that's not happening and the reason why that is is Stanley Ho's come in and taken 50% uh, of James Packer's equity stake in it um, now I think longer term that 
probably bodes well for Crown. You'd expect through Melco uh, ties into uh, the Chinese gaming market and in particular the casinos in Macau, that they'll be able to uh, improve the flow uh, of not just only VIP gaming, but uh, uh, visitors in general into the Crown resorts. And low interest rates and a slight improvement in housing sentiment should bode well for obviously what Crown are developing at Barangaroo as well. So just keep an eye on this. Uh, yeah, Maybe again, as a reference, you could look at this 10-day moving average and just say, well, it's not until price crosses back above the 10-day moving average that that would be your entry point. But I suspect we're getting pretty close to where value starts to value investors start to come back into crown. <clears throat> so I'd be keeping that one on your watch list. Uh, Grain Corp. Um, so this was one that we had the Elgo buy signal down here at 7:24. Uh, now pushing 820, um, so that's one that we like. Insurance Australia Group, so we like this. Uh, we had the buy signal, and I flagged this on the blog at around 740, now pushing 780. So again, you could look at selling, a, say, an $8 call option over this into uh, October, November, uh, and stripping out the upcoming dividend, the combination of the call option and the dividend. Uh, you're getting about 10% cash flow while still allowing for a little bit of capital growth, but depending, you may already be in this trade, uh, but if not, even buying it here and selling that $8 call. I think for the most part, IAG trade sideways. I don't see it creating a new high. Um, you know, again, we're only about four weeks out from Australian earnings season beginning where we'll get a clearer picture of what the earnings growth in these names. Macquarie Group, so this is one that I've, we've been buying in client accounts. So we own it on this pullback here at around on the blog. We're saying sort of 114, 115 was the entry level. Now pushing up uh, you know, up to higher levels there around 123. Um, that Macquarie gave a fairly um, soft outlook, and that's not unusual. The company's often uh, sort of under promises and over delivers. So we may see earnings growth. At the moment, the market's pricing in sort of something only around sort of 3 4% earnings growth, but we may see that upgraded as the year goes on. Um, so whether Macquarie could maybe get back up to this 135, 130, 135 level, um, but we just need to be a little bit cautious, I think, around the backdrop with the US market at the moment and obviously what plays out with these uh, trade tariffs. Uh, National Australia Bank, so this was added into the model, so switch from sell to buy here, so this was one uh, that we like, so as with ANZ, so our preference being ANZ, NAB and Macquarie. Uh, Oceana Gold, add this to your watch list, so support here at around $4, but Oceana, North Star and Evolution have all done very well at the moment. Uh, Oz Minerals, so we looked at that one earlier, so switched from sell to buy conditions, so around $9 there looks to be reasonable support. Uh, Pendle Group, just keep that on your watch list, maybe just watch the shorter term moving average here. Uh, but we're thinking that support starts to develop around this $7 level and we could see Pendle push a bit higher. Uh, Centre Group, 5.5% dividend yield, yeah, maybe only 3% earnings growth. Uh, it's a little bit out of favour at the moment. Obviously, the market's preferring Goodman Group and GPT as faster growing uh, earnings. You know, Goodman Group's growing earnings about 8%, GPT about 4-5%. or So centre groups at the lower end of those ranges and obviously greater exposure to retail uh, shopping. Um, but the company is still in the middle of a share buyback program that I think adds a little bit of support to it. So for the most part where we own this, we've actually sold $4 call options out into December and again turn that sort of 5% yield into 10% cash flow. Uh, Sydney Airport, so we've either taken profit on this or sold call options over this as well. Um, so at around $8, you could look at selling call options and boosting the cash flow on that one. Uh, Tabcorp, I think the lower risk way to play this is to buy it and sell fairly tight call options on the other side of the upcoming dividend. 
And again, you're getting to 10% cash flow opportunity for a little bit of capital growth. Um, I think you've got a little bit of a buffer here on Tabcorp through the cost savings that they're stripping out from the TATS business. Uh, whether longer term this is an asset that you would consider a core holding, maybe not. But uh, I do feel that the trade's around this 450 level and therefore it's a fairly low risk way of generating that sort of 10% cash flow. Same with Woolworths, buying it here and selling call options. That's, I think, you know, an opportunity that I would suggest that everyone looks at. Woodside Petroleum, same, uh, you know, short term over the next three months, I don't think you need to be holding this for capital growth, owning it, stripping out the dividend and selling a covered call option. Uh, Aristocrat, not doing it there at the moment. So I'll be just jumping back to Aristocrat. It's actually under sell conditions at the moment. Um, so later this year, if we see another retracement, we'll probably see that switch back to buy and it added into the model. Aristocrat had been one of the better performing stocks in the model portfolio for a long time. Uh, so it's been under buy conditions uh, for the last three or four years. And then on this recent sell-off, it was removed from the model. Um, but I'd expect to see it added back in on the next pullback. Uh, Bendigo, there's not many stocks on the short side that we're looking at at the moment, but just highlight that I think Bendigo's back up against resistance at 11.50. I think car sales is back up against resistance here. The latest uh, earnings upgrade or earnings result, I should say, I think showed that the company is focused on this, they've seen a slip in revenue and they're focused on cost cutting to deliver the profit results and for me that probably starts to create a bit of a headwind there so I've marked on the chart there that you've got resistance at around $14 so that's one that we're on the short side computer share we've been on the short side for most part of the last six months and we're continuing to see that make lower lows and lower highs a Qantas on the short side of this one, so we still continue to see resistance at around $6, and for the most part, the pressure on that's actually to the downside. Star, if we look back at the history of this, it switched from buy conditions into sell conditions there at 560. It's continued to make lower low, lower high, and we had another sell signal there at around 470, now pushing 380. Uh, Wes Farmer, so this is under sell conditions and I just highlighted on the blog the, the for the most part the sectors within the Wes Farmer's business especially sort of within the department store sales side of it where they're starting to see earnings uh, downgrades there and you've seen Wes Farmer's correct from $38 down to $35. The stock's on about a 4 point two four point four percent dividend yield where it is at the moment i think we're probably only weeks away from seeing a buy signal develop here It'd be nice to see an entry level back down at around thirty four dollars so just keep that one on your radar uh, i think you get an opportunity to buy this and maybe at that point it's a matter of just selling a covered call and stripping out the dividend and, and the call option income but having sort of an entry level back down, maybe around $34 in that. And then there we are back to AGL. So thank you for listening in to today's recording. Again, I'll update the notes for the opportunities in review and we'll attach that to the recording that's sent out. And I just urge you to take the time to come into the members area, uh, click on the model portfolio, uh, take a look through the different ones that are of interest to you, make sure you've got the envelope on green for the different lists that you want to follow and you'll get emailed which stocks are being added or removed from the model. Um, you know, Go into the watch list, you can add your own stocks to your watch list through your custom lists there. You can look at the international signals which is the, which is the S&P 100 and NASDAQ 100. The ASX signals, again that just stores the last seven days of the signal so if you once a week toggle through those lists. Uh, the blog, if you're not following the blog on a daily basis, you can just come in there and look at what I've spoken about in the last 30 days. Um, and then obviously any of the lists that you want to look at to keep track of the market on a daily basis are there as well. Thank you for listening in. And if you would like to have a chat about uh, taking up the special offer for the technology and trialing uh, the members area, then 
uh, please uh, please contact me using the details on screen. Again, thank you for listening in.